Today we're looking at how a lot of different things in a Unix style OS like Linux, and especially sockets, look a lot like files. Welcome back everybody, especially all of you who helped me keep the camera running by supporting this channel on Patreon. Today we're talking about sockets, which I made a bunch of socket videos in the past. I'll link to those in the description in case you are new to sockets, because today I'm just gonna jump right in the middle, assuming that you've seen them at least a little bit. So if you haven't, check out those videos. It might make today's video go a little bit easier. In this video, I'm also assuming you have seen file IO, so you know how to like open a file, read from it, and write to it, and things like that. Again, I've got videos on that as well, Check those out if this is new to you. Now, if you've been hanging around Linux, Mac OS, or any Unix style operating system for a while, you've probably heard people just casually say, oh yeah, in Unix, everything's a file. Or more accurately, everything looks like a file and behaves like a file. And it's true and it's intentional. Unix style file systems do try to make things as much as possible all look like files. And the reason is, is that this allows us to handle very different things in a very similar sort of way. We can write one piece of code that can handle things from pipes and sockets and files, and that's really cool. So today we're going to look at how that works. I want to show you how we can process data from a file, from a pipe, and from a socket specifically. As always, the source code's available through Patreon, so get it there if you don't want to type in as we go. But now, let's take a look at some code. Okay, today we're starting off with a little bit of code, more than usual actually. Usually I just start with kind of an empty main and we go from there, but today I didn't want to re-go over all the socket stuff, so I have a function here called HTTP GET, which is a really simple socket client. Uh, in fact, it's almost exactly the same thing that I did in my socket tutorial on writing a web client. So check out that video if you haven't seen it before. But all it really does is it's going to open a connection. So it takes in an address, which is just an IP address and a port. And this function is then going to come in and open a socket, connect to that server, and it sends an HTTP request. It looks like this. So it's gonna send that. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to return this socket file descriptor or the socket for the connection. And that's gonna allow us to actually read the response back, okay? So this is gonna come in handy in a minute, but that's here. There's also this error and die function, which I've used in the past. All that does is allows us to print out an error message. Uh, it has some nice variadic stuff, so it acts like printf. And mostly that's here because I use it throughout this HTTP get. If ever there's an error, I'm just gonna exit. You, of course, in your applications will handle errors in different ways, depending on the needs of your program. I also have a little make file here, which is gonna compile my program. And this program is gonna be called count lines because what I wanna do is I wanna read data from a bunch of different sources and just count the number of lines in the output. Okay, so let's let's come back here and we'll just close this up. See, the way that I want, I've got this print usage function, the way that I want this to be run is you can run this in three different ways. Okay, so if we come down here, let's just, just I mean, it, it doesn't work yet, but let's just compile it. And so let's say that I run count lines. This is just telling us what our intended usage is. So I wanna be able to say run count lines with standard in, and that says I want to actually just read whatever's coming in from standard in. So whatever's coming in from that pipe. The second is I wanna be able to specify a file. So if I say count lines file and then provide a file name, then that's going to read from that file and that's the output we'll look at. And then let's say that I want to actually make an HTTP request to a web server and download that, then I wanna grab the output from there. So the point is, is I wanna be able to switch between these. As always, as a programmer, I don't wanna repeat myself. I don't wanna produce a whole lot of duplicate code that handles these sources separately. So I wanna just talk about how we can actually use all of these and process their output in the same exact way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, so let's come down here right now, I'm just doing a quick argument check. So this is just saying, let's check to see if we have two or three arguments, which is what we need to make this all work. And let's just come down here and we're gonna add a quick variable. I'm gonna call it SRC, it's character pointer. And I'm gonna set this equal to argv1. I could just use argv1 directly, but this is probably gonna make my code a little bit more readable. And then I'm also gonna make a file pointer. I'm gonna call this input source. And let's start it out as null. Okay, so this eventually is going to be the thing I'm going to read from. Now, what I'd like to do is to have this one input source. And then down here, what I'd like to have some code that's like read all the lines from the source. And so I really would like to do something like, let's say, let's make a 
buffer. We'll call it, you know, we'll make it max line, which is, I defined that up at the top. That's 4096. And let's make an integer, which is called num lines. We'll start that at zero. And then I want to do something simple. Basically, I just want to do what we would do if we were reading line by line from a file. So let's just do something like, well, not F E O F input source. So I'm assuming, of course, right now this isn't going to work because input source is just null, but assuming that input source actually is connected to a file, then I could just use something like, you know, check to see if we're at the end of the file for as long as we're not at the end of the file, then we could come down here and say, if F gets, and let's read buffer, we'll get max line, that's the size of the buffer, and let's read from input source. And so as long as that gives me something that's not null, then I'm going to come down here and say num lines plus plus, okay? And then down here at the end, let's just close whatever our source is, and I'm going to just print out we read percent D lines, new line character, and we'll just print out num lines. Okay, so this is the code that I want to actually process my input, whether it comes from standard in, whether it comes from a file, or whether it comes from a socket. And now, the only thing we've got to do is in here, we need to actually set this up so that input source actually is connected to these things. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, let's start with the easiest case. Let's just say if I'm going to use string compare to compare our source to say standard in. Okay, so if my source that I specified was standard in, and if that's zero, then we're going to come down here and let's just say input source equals standard in, okay? Now, standard in is actually a pipe, but, and I'm not sure why it's giving me a red line. I'm sure it's gonna work just fine. But the point is it's a pipe coming in and that pipe is pointed to by a file pointer. So it actually, it's already, already looks like a file. So we can just assign it like this, one pointer to another. So that's our easiest case. And then I can say else if, and let's just do this same thing again, but now we're checking for if it's a file. Okay, so if it's a file, then we're going to come down here and let's say input source equals, we'll just use f open, and the file name we'll use is argv2, and we'll open it in read mode. So that was almost as easy as the standard in case, so really nothing, nothing crazy there. Okay, now let's get our socket case. So same thing here, let's say that our source here is HTTP. Now in this case, we have our function up above, we have this HTTP get function, so we'll just use that. So I'm going to say int socket equals HTTP get, and then let's pass in argv2. That'll be our IP address. And let's put server port, which I defined up above as 80, which is the standard port for HTTP. Obviously, if this was on a different port, we would use a different port number here. But for now, this will work just fine. Okay, now the issue here is this is the, the first place where things get a little bit interesting because standard in is already like the type of standard in, it's already one of these file pointers. And and f open returns one of these file pointers, but a socket is an int. And so at first glance, you might go, well, how is that the same as a file? That actually looks a lot different from a file. It's a number rather than one of these pointers. And the key insight here is that this int is actually what we refer to as a file descriptor. And inside of every one of these file pointers, there is a file descriptor. The file descriptor is actually what the operating system is using to keep track of these open files. This file pointer here is just a convenient struct that helps with buffering and things like that. So for this, we actually have a helpful function that we're going to use that is a lot like fopen, but it's called fdopen. Okay, so in this case, what I'm going to do is say input source equals fdopen. Now fdopen is just like fopen, but instead of giving it a file name, we're going to give it an open file descriptor. So in this case, socket, and then I just want to open that in read mode. And that's because I want to read the data from the socket. And so there with just a single extra line of code, now we are actually able to take a socket and convert it into one of these file pointers. So now we have a file pointer. And now this can be used, basically all of these can be used in the code down below in exactly the same way. Now let's just 
just to be careful, let's add just a little bit. Let's add an else case here. And so if something else happens, let's just print out uh, error invalid source and percent %s and a new line. And that'll help us if we accidentally type something in wrong and we can return exit failure so we don't continue with a source that doesn't make sense. Now, one other little bit of error checking here is there's always the possibility that one of these things failed, you know, that, that I passed in a file name that didn't exist. And so input source might be null. So let's come down and do one more check and say if, oh, I keep putting a T in there, if input source equals null, then we're gonna print out error could not open source. And then once again, we will return exit failure. And so now hopefully we have a working program. So, so what we're doing here, we basically have a little bit of code here that takes each of these sources, makes them all look the same, basically gets this input source file pointer here. And depending on what our input was, it's either going to be a pipe coming from standard in, a, an open file that we specify as an argument from the command line, or it's going to be an open socket. And then we can come down here and we're gonna read line by line and then get the number of lines and print it out. Okay, so let's just see if this works. Let's come down, we can compile it. It's actually kind of amazing that it compiles the first time. Went through that pretty fast. Now, if we come down here, let's just make sure we can do, okay, so we can do this. Now let's say standard in. Okay, now it's gonna wait for input. So I can say something like, hello, my name is Jacob and I'm testing my program and then control D and you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six lines in our input. Okay, so that seemed to work just fine. We we're able to take standard in, no problem. Okay, so now let's try it with a file and we'll say, let's do our make file. Okay, we'll just it's convenient. Okay, so that says we read 10 lines. Let's double check. We come in here. Sure enough, it is 10 lines long. Okay, so far so good. Now let's run this with a network server. So let's first, let me get an IP address. Let's just ping google.com. Okay, so that gives me an IP address I can use. So now let's come back here and do HTTP and specify that address. And now you can see we read 91 lines in the output. And so you can see our program works great. And so this is just a really quick example to show you both that a lot of things in Unix style operating systems do look like files and also how this can be helpful to you in making really not a lot of code. Like this is a pretty short program, but but it actually is quite flexible. It can do a lot of different things. It can handle inputs from a lot of different sources without having to write socket specific code or pipe specific code or file specific code because we can make everything look the same. So I hope that's helpful. I hope you learned something new. I hope this helps you in a future project. If you found it helpful, please like or subscribe, click something on your way out. And until next week, I will see you later.